Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a spring scene. It's starting to warm up here where I am. It's not uh, spring yet, but uh, we're getting there. So I uh, thought I would do a little scene that's uh, hopefully springy with some cherry blossom trees. The scene is really a waterfall that I found a photo of and some flowering trees around it. So we're going to put some cherry blossoms around this waterfall and uh, see if we can make a nice uh, spring scene out of it. Um, I have my uh, usual photo here that I have, and I have also uh, my uh, value map that I always create to help me um, figure out what the values are in this painting. And of course, I have my sketch done on the canvas here very lightly with uh, white uh, charcoal pencil on a gray gesso uh, panel. We're using 11 by 14 canvas panel again today with gray gesso and the sketch is done in white charcoal. So you can see that there. Um, and uh, other than that, I'll, I'll tell you the brushes are the same. We're using the Bob Rush brush set uh, that uh, has a one inch um, landscape brush. We have a number, uh, number three fan brush. We have a, a small rigger, number six rigger. I'm sorry, number two uh, rigger. I also have a couple of brushes I add which are uh, a flat, not a flat, but a bristle bright, and I add a uh, filbert. Uh, those are number 10 and number 12. I get those from uh, Dick Blick. They're basically scholastic student grade brushes, so most of the people in the class have uh, these brushes. And uh, you, the Bob Ross painting knife, the small painting knife that he has in his set. Um, and then the paints are uh, the same, usual set. I've added a, a little magenta color here from the Bob Ross soft oil uh, colors. But uh, we have our usual titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, um, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, and bright red uh, magenta from Bob Ross soft oil colors. And I have a ultramarine violet from Grumbacher that I add. So. With that said, uh, that's all I really want to say about this particular painting. We're going to get going and uh, see if we can get this thing started here. Um, I'll use a little liquid white as usual. I, I use sort of a modified Bob Ross approach. I don't cover the entire canvas with liquid white as he would do simply because I want to preserve my sketch. So I will selectively put on some liquid white here in some areas that uh, I know I want to have some nice soft uh, movement of paint and uh, this background area is going to be soft and and uh, sort of foggy like um, find these trees here this is all trees in the upper part I'll just go ahead and paint this in right now I know what's going here I don't need to preserve that part of the sketch but uh, just helps the paint move faster and easier I don't use quite as much paint when we do it this way have this waterfall coming down here. I want to preserve where that is. Coming down, it gets uh, into this area all the way down. Water down here, big, s that type of stuff here. Okay, that pretty much preserves my basic sketch. Don't need to do much more than just put that liquid white on there. If I need more liquid white, I can always put it on. But uh, this kind of helps me keep track of where things are in this painting without wiping out the entire canvas with liquid white. All right. So let's start with this background area. I'm going to make a little bit of a, a nice soft lavender color here. I'm going to take a little of this. Uh, ultramarine violet and this magenta that I have, pick up a little white and see if I can start with this background. This doesn't have a sky in it, but it does have a very soft, to make this very light back here. Here, I'll put a little bit over here. We're going to have this color peeking through in different places. Um, there, we'll have some down here, some over here. 
I just made a little really light color here. Um, I'm going to darken it down a little bit now with some more my little bit of Prussian blue. See what that can do for this background here. I want this background to be a very small, small amount of area, but I want it to uh, kind of look misty and usually we get missed by putting paint over liquid white and then stippling on top of it to give ourselves a nice misty look. And that's going to have to be a lot darker than that. So I'm going to see if I can pick up just a little of my midnight black now. Start darkening that down slightly. Whoops, I don't want Van Dyke Brown in there. I want midnight black. So this has to be dark enough that I'm going to be able to see this waterfall. There's a little waterfall that starts out here in the in the middle of this. And there are really trees and all kinds of stuff here in the background. It's hard to see. But I'm going to just sort of make this Make some vertical stro uh, brush strokes up here that give ourselves some nice misty look back here. Okay, let's see if I can get a little more dark in there. And we start getting some green and some blue green in here, so I'm going to pick up a little of my sap green and add a little. Uh, Prussian blue to it and start changing the color back in here to start representing some foliage sort of runs back in this area I still think that needs to be darker let's see if we can darken it up over here a little more a little Prussian blue midnight black Okay, hopefully that's starting to look like it's got some depth in it and uh, some dark areas. Um, I think it still needs to be darker. Let me see if I can get some more of this blue in here. There's some dark streaks. There we go. Let's pick up some pure Prussian blue. That's a very dark color and it will really darken up these areas. A little bit more midnight black in here. We're not going to paint all these trees, but they're supposed to just represent us. A lot of trees and a lot of things off in the distance going way back in there. So variation of color and uh, will make this look like it has a lot of depth. If you make it all one bland color, it doesn't look it doesn't look like there's any depth there. So you got to vary these colors. And again, just vertical strokes here with this big brush. I haven't cleaned the brush since I started. Okay, and then we have a little waterfall coming out here to start with, and then the branches of these trees, and then there's more green greenery and. Uh, Coming over to the right here in this area. I think right in here we have a lot of greenery that sort of touches on the side of the waterfall. Let's just paint some of that in. I don't have liquid white on here now, so I'm using more paint. Let's put in some block and some color in here. This is going to run right over to the waterfall. And there's some dark browns and blacks in this area. Top of this waterfall here. So I'm just going to scrub some of this in, get some of the canvas covered. And we'll be putting some paint back over the top of this. But right now, let's just get this painted in as much as we can. Try 
cover the canvas with. Mm -hmm. Blues, blacks, a little bit of violet. All this area down in here is sort of really dark. Uh, so let's just go ahead and block some of that in if I can. Become a little white. Maybe a little liquid white to help thin it out a little bit. <clears throat> always make it darker, always make it lighter. So I'm really just kind of reacting to this painting now without uh, having done it before. You're seeing me do this for the first time. Just block it in here. We get some darks, really some dark areas down here on the lower right. Some violet in there, some black. Let's make a good underpainting. We want to make sure we have this canvas covered. We don't want to have uh, gray areas of canvas showing through. And there, let's see, up here. So I'm just giving it a good once over. Mixing the colors up between this green color that's got some sap green, some ochre and yellow in it. Getting a lot on the canvas in a hurry. And uh, I think I'll just stop with that right about in here right now for this part of it. Okay, so we have a lot on the canvas. I'm going to finally clean out my brush now. And go back and start putting a little more definition in some of these background trees. To do that, I'm going to pick up my filbert brush and start getting some uh, darker colors here uh, to help highlight these trees. Um, some of the trees are in the real in far distance, but then they're starting. There's some others that are starting to get a little closer here. So we're going to start just putting in some brush marks that look like there are some trees that are kind of sticking out in this area. Uh, dark, it's got to be darker than what's on there or you won't see it. So we're going to just put some of these in like this. Just touching this brush, taking this filbert and getting a lot of paint on it and uh, just putting in little barks that look like trees. I don't have to paint every tree, but I certainly want to have them look like trees. And I want to have enough contrast that you can see them in front of what's behind it. So, like that. There's a few over here hanging. I'll put some of these over like this. These aren't quite as dark, but um, they might even be a little lighter in some areas with some sun hitting on them a little bit. Pop a little light, some light colors in here. Start getting some springy color. So I'm taking a little uh, CAD, CAD yellow and just top, putting on top of some of this. So I'm not going over that multiple times. I'm sort of just touching it with the brush and then leaving it alone, getting what I, whatever I get out of it. If I keep, keep going over the same spot all the time, I'll end up turning this all into a mushy gray looking color, and I don't want that. I want you to see the background. I want you to see some trees. I want you to see the foliage. Uh, there is going to be one of these 
cherry blossom trees sticking out here. We'll have some areas that kind of go back like this that you'll be able to see. Okay. Some bright areas in some spots here and here. All right. Um, might get out our script liner brush now and uh, come in and put a few little trunks in there, get some thinner on the brush, make the paint very, very thin. If you don't, it won't go on, it'll just stay on your brush. Um, I'm going to put a few, few little marks back here that look like there's some tree trunks floating back in there. That's probably a little too dark, maybe I need to lighten it up a little bit. A little grayer maybe here, let's see what this looks like, yeah. Yeah, I want them to show, but I don't want them to be so obvious that they stand out. And the darker you make them, the more they come forward. So I don't want them to come forward too much because they are definitely in the background. But I want you to be able to see them back here or somewhere here. Just here and there. Okay. Getting a nice foggy look to that background. Okay. Oh, let's stop with that now. Okay. Clean out my filbert. Now over this waterfall here, there's a little waterfall coming out in the back. And um, I want to have some very dark area back here so that we can see it. So I'm picking up some midnight black. Just making a little area back here that I'm going to make that waterfall come over. Let's see uh, these areas. I'll just put a little more color in here to just sort of give me something to paint over. Okay. Let me get out our fan brush now. Number three fan brush. And I'm going to get some a little bit of liquid white in it, not much, but I'm going to get some liquid white and add some titanium white to it. And um, this waterfall actually comes down back here. I'm going to make a very thin stream back here, like this. And when it hits this area here, it starts spreading out. I hope you can see that on camera. It's a very subtle thing, but it starts coming down like this, and then it starts breaking into little areas that cascade. It's foggy, and okay, I think that's about what I want to do there. Okay. And we start blending this together. There's not much of a water. There's a little water pool back here, but it's got trees hanging over it. So I'm going to put these trees over some of this. But I just want to leave this covered. And then it comes down and hits this next area of the waterfall down here. So it's like a two or three stage waterfall. Like that. Okay. All right, so I've painted a little painting right there. If you could just frame in on on that one little section, it almost has a look of a painting all by itself. If you were to uh, let's do a little quick zoom in here, there's a. Quick look at 
that area. Okay, let me back out. Sorry for the shaky camera here, but I'm trying to show you some things that maybe wouldn't otherwise be able to show you. Just part of a larger painting here. Too much. All right, something like that. All right. So we have the beginnings of our nice little waterfall starting off in the distance. We've gone about 20 minutes. So let's keep chugging here and see what we can do. Um, we've got some beautiful flowering trees coming in here. Um, let me see if I can get this another sort of a background layer here that's got some dark in it. Another area for this waterfall to go over. It's a little wider here and then it starts even widening out further down. So do that. This is all going to be cherry blossoms in here. There might be a few little green areas right in here that kind of overlap as well. So this is sort of a hidden pond here that has some nice little features that I really like. Darken it up around the edges and then we'll put some these cherry blossoms on top of it. Okay. Using this fan brush here to sort of give myself some more foliage in this area. Picking up the white that's in there is lightening up some of that green. Pick up more green, more darks over here. All right, just a lot of foliage in here. There's actually a nice little lavender tree in here that I want to capture in this area. On the other side, I think I want some more midnight black. I have to get myself a little more midnight black here. I didn't put enough out, so pop a little more on there. Using quite a bit of midnight black in this. So these again are abstract, non-distinct shadows of bushes and trees and that sort of thing back in here. All right. We got a lot of these dark spots that just sort of go throughout this tree. So this, as we put a tree over this, we'll be able to see some of these things pop out. A few dark spots down here. All right. Then there's more darks over here. All right, we're just painting our way top to bottom. This uh, these cherry blossom trees. I think I'm going to start with my maybe go back to my filbert here and see if I can get some of the color. This uh, nice magenta color, lighten it up. A couple different shades and values of magenta. Uh, here you can see I'm picking up some titanium white and magenta and I'm just going to start right in this area and start putting in some of these tree branches that sort of float out here. This tree is really pretty close to us so it's actually you can see a lot of the colors in it. Very pretty. Maybe you can pick up a little of the lavender color and put a little bit of that in here in some spots. Give it some shadows, give it some depth, lights and darks. 
and we're going to have some branches coming in here as well. So let's just put in a few of those. Make this come out over that area. Gotta make sure I don't get in that green. Once I put this brush and touch that green, then I lose my color of my light magenta. I have to go back and get more paint in the brush. So, okay. A little, magic, a little more of this violet color to help get me a little bit of uh, more shadows in here in some spots. Now, if we keep going back and pushing on that, we will just pound all that into one color, which I don't want. So I'm going to try to stay out of there as much as possible now and maybe put a few highlights here and there and maybe lighten up some of the these branches, but pretty much leave it alone. Okay, that's that tree. Now, to make it look more like a tree, I'm going to put some branches in there, get my rigger out again, and let's pick up some thinner on it and get a little bit of this uh, midnight black, a little bit of uh, Van Dyke to get a dark, darker color. It looks like a tree trunk, maybe a little uh, dark sienna in there. Get it nice and runny, roll your brush, and let's put in a few branch-like things that kind of sit in here and hold this thing all together. Otherwise, you don't have it. It doesn't look quite real. You don't see some of these things in there. You don't really see the trunk of this tree. It's just sort of off the canvas here to the left. Okay, something like this. Okay. Hope that comes across on the camera so you can see it. The other side, we have a very similar tree on the other side. I might as well go ahead and do that now. Pick up more white, more magenta. Maybe this is going to be a little lighter on the right side, maybe, just to change the color a little bit so we don't have identical colors on both sides. Kind of hair in there, get that hair out of the way. If I use this if you pick up some of that green in your brush, wipe the brush off, go back and get some more paint. You gotta use a lot of paint when you're painting in areas like this. Sort of stippling and pounding. These are those tree branches that are like sticking over. You see them over the, the green. Could have painted these first and put the green in last or do it this way. It's really up to you, however you like to paint, but um, So just load this thing up with 
all these nice little pink colors. Get some some darker colors in there here and there to uh, add some depth. Plenty of white, plenty of magenta. Then go back and put on some specific tops on here. Okay. And maybe a little bit of this violet to gray down some areas. So show some more shadows in here with this violet. <clears throat> Back with just some pure white and drop on in some of these areas. Want it to look like these are tree branches sort of hanging over. All right, Let's see what that looks like from a distance. Step back, it never hurts to get back away from it. Okay, pretty much what I want to have in here. A few more down this way, maybe. Pick up a little bit more of this. Like that, get the script liner brush again, get some thinner in it, and let's put a few, few branches in over here like this, in some areas, that's a little too dark, lighten it up, pick up a little liquid white will help. Liquid white will still keep it runny but lighten up the color a little bit so we don't have quite as much quite as dark this way we have some branches coming out lighten that up a little bit there has to be a little darker than what's behind it or you won't see it. So you got to make sure that it's darker, but you don't want it to be so bold that it hits you in the face. So... Just a few highlights here on top of this to make sure we got this standing out bright. Just titanium white on top with this filbert brush. All right. <clears throat> All right, there's a couple of nice little trees. So I have another little lavender tree that's sort of in the middle here. I want to pop it in. I'm going to get some of this violet, some white, and um, in this area right in here, there's a tree that I want to stand out. So it goes like this. Some sort of a flowering tree of some kind. It's got a lot of pretty colors in it. So I'm just laying this filbert down on it like that. Get a few little things out there. Okay, so that's pretty well all filled in there. I can got to work on this waterfall. Bring it down, a lot more darks in here and uh, 
then some rocks in the foreground. So we're going to get waterfalls, some flowering trees, and and uh, rocks today. Pick up a little more white here and see if I can put a few highlights in. This tree. All right, something like that. Go back to my script liner now, pick up the... I get some trunks in here. Pick up a little midnight black, a lot of thinner. With some of this other trunk color I have here to lighten it up just a little and just put in a few, few things here like this. Actually comes down, has a this little trunk that's setting down in the ground over here, somewhere like this. Okay. Maybe a little hard to see, but it looks decent here where I'm looking at it. So, okay. Um, we have another couple of trees over here, more, more bushes. Okay. Let us see. Pick up some midnight black and some green, sap green, put a little yellow in there, maybe a little yellow ochre, get a dark color. If it doesn't get dark enough, throw some Prussian blue in there. But in here around these trees, we got some more bushes and I'm painting this around these trees, as you can see, to darken it up. If I make it really dark around these trees, those things will really pop out a lot more than if they're it's sort of this gray. This color that's on there is almost the color of the canvas, a mid-value. I want a darker value in here. So the darker value that I pop in here will help these branches all start to stick out. Again, this is all just foliage that's sort of laying along the side of this waterfall. And I'm making it dark. So we got a little ochre here and there. So I'm just covering it with a darker layer here of midnight black, a little sap green, and a little brown in here maybe. If you start coming down to this bank, we're getting in all kind of stuff that's maybe darker. And because I've got a lot of that liquid white on this paper down here, it's actually lightening it up. So I'm just putting in some more my X strokes to sort of make this look like a, a bank of some kind around this waterfall. Here on this tree. Put in some more areas that look like we got some level ground in here like this. This is where some rocks are going to go. All right, let's clean out the brush there. All right, step back, take a look. Check the time, about 30, 40 minutes. Okay. Over here, we got some more dark greens and greens and blues, some grays. I'm doing the same thing over here, just sort of painting around these trees with some very dark colors to sort of make this pop out just a little more.
just to add some texture by just putting some X strokes in there. Okay, so hopefully that's going to make that tree pop out a little more. You see the nice little uh, bluish lavender tree sitting back here. Some dark around him. All right, so now it's time to get our fan brush out again and maybe work on this waterfall. Some more paper towel out. Okay, this fan brush. Put just a little bit of a tone in this waterfall, not uh, perfectly white, but I'm going to make it sort of a little. I have some color in there. Picked up a little green, wipe that off the brush. Don't want that. You get your brush in that green, wipe the brush or you'll be disappointed. It's another little shelf here that's got some the water is pooling up again. So let's see if we can make that look right. Some of it's just rushing over that so fast you can't even slow it down. These vertical brush strokes are what make it look like a waterfall. Some dark areas in here that I want to restate. I've kind of lost some of them, but in this area here, we'll put in a few things that look like we're getting some dark areas behind there. The rocks sort of make this it's the same idea. The, the dark makes the light stand out, and if you have enough contrast, you'll be able to. Definitely fool, fool the viewer. Into believing this is a real waterfall with rocks inside it and underneath it. All about optical illusions and making things look three dimensional. So we're coming into another little set of water pooling in this area. Some of this doesn't really have a, a ledge there. I'm going to just pull this down like this. There we go. If you pull it lightly over this, you'll see what's underneath, but it will also definitely make this look like you've got some, something behind it, like rocks or something. realized it's looking like a rectangle. Don't want that. I want it to be wider at the bottom and narrower at the top. So I'm either going to make the bottom wider or the top narrower. I think I'm going to make the bottom wider. A lot of work to go back there and try to fix that top. Okay, something like this. it down vertical street 
cheeks. Change the color, put a little blue in there. A little bit of uh, my Prussian blue I started picking up in here to chart, sort of change the color a little bit. Um, I have some rocks over here. And then we start getting in some, some more of this blue color over here. I don't know if that phthalo blue would help us. It has a little green in it. Yeah, let's touch a little phthalo blue in here. There, that's a, a little bit different color. I haven't used my any of my bright red or any of that today. Go back and touch a little of this lavender color in there too. This uh, will help give a little bit of harmony to this painting. Too much. White, white. This uh, so we have a lot of frothiness at the bottom that I haven't yet put in, but um, getting ready to do a little bit of that. A little more liquid white here with some titanium white. A touch of midnight black will help put in some areas that look like we have some a little level area here that's got some rock, some shadows, and then by just stippling on top of this, we can sort of pound in some frothiness titanium white and just spread it out here. Put some up here. If you take this brush and just sort of pound it on, you'll get some of this frothiness like we do with when we make some of the tree branches. We just sort of pound it. It's called stippling. All right, there we go. All right, so the contrast, make sure you have the differences in contrast going on here. Try to make it narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. Typically that's what waterfalls do. They sort of spread out and as they come down. I just put a little of this pink in there to make it uh, more for harmony than anything else. Um, probably wouldn't really be there in real life but this is an artistic rendering, not a real-life, realistic photo. Okay, now we're getting close to putting in some of these rocks. Rocks are going to be a typical rock color. Um, burnt, or dark sienna and Van Dyke brown. Right in here, we got some rocks. And actually, I'm going to make some of them a little grayer than brown. So I'm putting in, sort of blocking in my rocks here. Some of these rocks are, they actually have a lot of reddish color in them, but I'm going to make some of them more gray. At least on this side. So let's just cover the canvas here with this color and then we'll come back and carve out the rocks. Show you how you can be a rock carver. Could use the knife for this. But I decided to use this fan brush. I've sort of ignored my fan brush lately, so I'm going to use it. Put some gray rocks in here. Sandy 
light colored rocks, we can maybe come back and put a little foliage in here, a little greenery to brighten it up a little bit. Okay. That's that side. The other side is going to be very, very similar, but not identical. We don't want identical things on both sides of the painting. Looks too boring. So over here, we're going to put in some slightly different colors. got some darks over here so let's just kind of load on top of them what we have here with some ultramarine violet a little dark sienna maybe even put a little alizarin crimson in there I don't know sometimes alizarin helps these things look more rock like so these rocks are going to be more vertical sort of coming down this way these are going to be more flat that's the plan. A little lizard over here, maybe warm some of this up. Okay, how are we doing? It's looking pretty decent. I'm going to come back. I've got this layer on. I'm going to now come back with my filbert and try to define some of these rocks now. Got a nice underpainting for rocks. And I want to try to carve them out of that underpainting by adding darks and shadows. This is sort of a little bit darker than mid value, but if I can add some darks, shadows, and then some highlights, I will start showing you some rocks. So let's work on some darks here. Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, really get the dark colors here, even maybe put a little Prussian Blue in there. But some of these areas, like right here, we're going to just put in a few marks like that. Maybe there's one right here. Sort of carve that out. Up here we had a back of another one. Light's sort of coming from the right, I'm pretending. So this side on the right will probably be a little darker than this side. And we'll just pop in some things like this. Over here we'll put some dark shadow areas in here. Now maybe I haven't convinced you these are rocks yet, but if I come back and put some light highlights on top, <coughs> I can make you think more that these are more like rocks. And to do that, I think I may get out my palette knife here. Haven't used it for a while. Pick up some of this light gray. I had this midnight black mixed with some liquid white over here. So the highlight's going to be sort of a grayish color. And right on top of some of these, just sort of throw in some really Get that roll of paint on your knife and let the canvas pull off just a little bit of it. Something like this.
Now I may want to come back and fine tune some of those with the filbert here and put some uh, grass or some greenery on top. Over here I'm going to have some similar types of things. Put on some highlights first. Okay, let's see how that looks with I get my filbert back now and see if I can connect those to the ground. Some subtle value changes here will help make it look like there's more rocks in here. Probably had too much with that knife right there, so I'll just pull it back a little bit. On the other side, we got similar types of things going on. I get too close to this and it's hard to see the rocks for the... when you're so close. step back a little bit and see if it helps lead the eye in. Yes, it does. On the right, these are really pretty nondescript. some rocks in the, even in here that we need to highlight. We can make these waterfalls look like putting dark over the light or putting light over dark. OK, 
Okay, come over here and put some more rocks in here. That doesn't look very good to me. I'm going to make those more rounded. <coughs> yeah, that's a little better, I think. Put a few darks in here like this. fine tuning now let's see maybe I'm gonna put a little bit of this I see just a little of this sort of a pinkish color on top of these <coughs> Okay, now I put in a few more trunks of some trees. How about this getting some thinner, more thinner? And darker than what's behind him but in this area we have one tree growing right there got some It's going to be darker than what's behind it or lighter than what's behind it. So if you can't get it <coughs> darker, excuse me, you can make it maybe a little lighter in some areas like this. another tree similar to that over here maybe sticking up Fasten these to the bottom, make sure they're connected to the ground somehow. some greenery now we're going to put a few more <clears throat> green green things here's kind of mossy like looking stuff
a little Prussian blue, a little sap green, cad yellows. Getting this filbert full of stuff here and sort of I'll pop in a few little green items down here to sort of tie in with the green up above. So little bushes sitting around here everywhere. <clears throat> Just wherever this green can get a foothold, it kind of grows when you're in an <clears throat> area like this. So that kind of helps the foreground look a little more filled out. And we got trees that are noticeable on both sides. I think I'm going to add one little tree to the right just to make it look a little different than the left side. Like right in here, maybe. Take a lot of thinner on this brush. And some liquid white. <clears throat> this gray color I have. Yeah, these trees don't have much on them yet. Maybe they're late bloomers or maybe they're not going to bloom at all. Okay, and then maybe there's some just stragglers back in here somewhere like this. Just fill it in with some interesting vertical things. Look like there's a lot of trees and stuff in this area. All right. I think I may stop here. Go back and check this. Pretty close to what I wanted to do. I think it looks Nice and pleasant. I see an area that could be just a little darker up here in the top. I think I'll get it before I shut down. Right in here, I'm going to make this come in against this waterfall. It needs to be narrower at the top. So that will help that. And if I come over and get some of this green, dark green on the right side, I can push it in a little bit over here like this. So I can have a few things sort of stick out over the waterfall that look like they're something growing in some of these areas. Breaks it up so it's not a rectangle, it's not necessarily a trapezoid, it gives it some, some look and feel that's a little different. Abstract shapes, we want this to be an abstract shape. If it's a rectangle or a square or whatever, it's not as pleasing as an abstract shape. Okay, what else can I do to this? I think pretty well make these as horizontal as you can make them. Okay, I think I better stop or I will make it worse. Okay, this is Larry Hamilton. I'm uh, glad you joined me today and I hope you enjoyed doing this painting. And if you're in my class, this is the painting we will do on our April 16th, 2014 uh, oil painting class. And uh, if you're not in a class, paint along and let me know how you do. Glad you joined me today and I'll talk. see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye.